a small city car called the VW Lupo? Well, they created a GTI variant, a warm hot hatch to rival the Citroen Saxo VTS and Peugeot 106 GTI. In fairness, it didn't stand much of a chance, partly because the chassis wasn't as wild as the other two, and mostly because it was marginally more expensive. Fast forward 20 years later, and the Lupo has developed a cult following, so much to the point where these are starting to slowly increase in value because of its rarity and quirky looks. Today I'm driving one that's got a few tasty mods. The engine starts out in life as a 1.6 litre 4 cylinder with variable valve timing. It makes 125 horsepower, with additional headwork that's been port and polished, along with a Jan Speed catback exhaust and a remap, it makes 158 horsepower. Suspension work, it has BC Racing coilovers, a white line rear anti roll bar and OEM bushes. Wheels are 15 inch OZ Ultra Leggera rims and in the summer it usually wears Yokohama 808R tyres but since it's January it's on Uni Royal Rain Sport 3s. Brakes are 4 piston Willwood calipers with the fast row pads on the front and EBC Ultimax pads on the rear. Inside it has the stunning Recaro pole position race seats and a harness bar with OMP 4 point race harness and no rear seats to save weight. The car weighs under a thousand kilos with near 160 horsepower. <laughs> Well, that's all tightened up. I'm bolted in. It's actually quite handy having this. It's amazing, isn't it? Lupo GTIs, they never really copped on when they first came out, mainly because of how, I don't know, I, th I think mainly because of the price. It was quite expensive when it first came out. Um, it was also not as sweet or as sharp to drive as say a Peugeot 106 GTI or the Citroen Saxo VTS, they're the same sort of shell platform. But it was a cool, robust, funky car. It came out in the era when the VW Beetle came out, which was on the Mark IV platform. So it had that sort of funky sort of feel to it. But the owner, Clayton, has done quite a few mods to it, already has been explained. It's got the 1.6 litre four pop variable valve timing and bury into the throttle four five six the second cam comes in and then you get this really nice thrummy almost metallic-y four cylinder soundtrack a bit like yeah, you get from a from an old alpha julia it's um it's really really nice I was impressed by the Honda S2000's gear shift, but this, this might just be better. The shift quality is not quite as robust, but because it's got the light and flywheel, you can just change that gear so quickly and change up them really, really quick as well too. And the shift itself, well, So this car had what, 125, 130 horsepower when it came out, 0 to 60 in the 8-ish mark. This car now is running at 160 horsepower, NA engine as well too. And it's really punchy low down, really, really punchy low down. Tyres are more set up for uh, winter use, to put it that way, but it deals with the greasy roads really well. And again, it's got torque. It's got proper, proper torque. Unlike, uh, I don't know, like a, a, an EP3 Civic Type I know it's a different type of car, where you've got to really rev it at the top end. This thing, sorts, it, it's on it at five, and it goes on and on and on and on. And it might 
might look like that I'm going absolutely bloody quick, but it's not because it's so small and, and chuckle, which just feels like, I mean, it's such a cliche thing to say, but it feels like a go-kart. You can, you can drift in your own lane. How hilarious is that? Since, I mean, when was the last time could you do that in any modern car? So obviously the successor to this is the VW Up GTI, and I had a little brief drive in that car, and I was very, very disappointed, sadly. It just didn't have the the poise or the delicacy of something that I was quite expecting. I was hoping for it to be a, a Twingo 133, but a thrummy little freezer. But unfortunately, it's just a turbocharged up that's got stiffer suspension, and it, the, the flywheel and the gear shift just wasn't quite there. And I was so gutted because me, as an up owner, was really looking forward to that car and I've been waiting five years to that come out. Obviously we'll do a video on the up GTI at some point in the future, but this Lupo GTI, they're just, I think they're a dark horse. We keep, we keep reviewing dark horses really, I don't know whether I'm going to title this video, is Lupo GTI underrated? It is underrated, really, really underrated, but you know, what are these, five, six grand? few more grand thrown at it in terms of brakes, tyres, suspension, dampers and seats. Seats are everything. Seats are absolutely everything in a car. These pole positions, they're the exact same ones that you find in the Mercedes C63 Black Series, CLK Black Series and the AMG GTR with these four point harnesses you just pinned in and it loans the driving position as well too. Rather than you sitting upright like that, you sit low in the car which is really, really and you get a nice suggestion of feel over the back axle. This car does have a few problems. Although the rev limit is raised from about six to seven and a half, it could do with another 1500 RPM. It just feels really strong enough to rev at eight and a half thousand RPM. And it almost sounds like a, a Honda VTEC engine. The throttle response is so nice. Yeah, another good car. I love me. We keep finding these cars all the time, you know. I, lo I love it when I get to drive owners' cars because not only do I get to learn more about older cars and where modern cars are going uh, further on as well too, um, you get to enjoy some of the finer traits. And a hot hatch, I suppose, it does have to be a manual gearbox. It does have to have a normally aspirated revy engine. However, on the limit, <laughs> It does snap ever so slightly. Pile into a corner too fast, too hard, the car does start to just sort of snap the other way. Almost like a top heavy effect like you get on the BMW Z4s. But yeah, it's really, really cool. The, pro the problem I have with it is, is you end up, well, it's not a bad thing because that's the whole point of a hot hatch. You end up driving it too hard, too fast, too much of the time. But you're always within control some way. Um, which is which is great, and some of the B roads I've been driving on today, I just feel like I'm in a special stage. I just feel like I'm doing some sort of junior rally stage. I mean, look how quick I can change gear. I'm probably changing gear as quick as some single clutch gearbox cars. Um, I could be changing shit, but seriously, the, the the light and flywheel just makes a massive difference. GTI, I mean the gear shifts was pretty alright, but this, this is great, and it hasn't got like a short shift or anything like that, it's just had a flywheel change, six-speed manual gearbox, and it just feels absolutely on the money. <laughs> love it, absolutely love it. So if you're in the market for a small little junior hot hatch to do track days to keep up with the big boys you're on a budget you can look at a lupo gti you could also look at a renault clio 182 however it's very hard to find a clean example renault clio 182 um, you could also look at a twingo 133 they're not a bad shout um, it's a younger car and you can get them for around about three and a half grand it's great this is cool clayton you've done a good job 